Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So today we have a question that if we read Quran only, is it enough for our daily life, for our next life, or is it necessary for us to read Hadith as well? So this is the question for today. So answer of this question is in the book Mishkatul Musabi. So this is the name of the book, Mishkatul Masabe. And in that, there are many hadiths for this topic, which tells us that it is necessary for us to read hadiths also along the Quran. If we read Quran only and neglect the hadith, then this will not be good for our daily life and for our next life. So it is necessary for you to read Quran, also read Hadith as well. So we have many Hadith in this book for this topic. And today we are going to read or focus only on these three because last time we studied the previous Hadith on this topic. So today we'll start with Hadith number 164. So pause the video and read this Hadith completely. <clears throat> so here, if we see the wording of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here, is it that one of you as he reclines himself on a couch, imagines that Allah has not disallowed anything beyond what is forbidden in this Quran. Now, by Allah, I have commanded, admonished, and disallowed many things as many as are mentioned in the Quran or more. So what look at the wording of this hadith. This hadith tells you that whatever Prophet Muhammad has forbidden us, whatever he has commanded, whatever he has disallowed, it is necessary for us to listen to those commands. Basically, these are hadiths. So along with Quran, it is necessary for us to follow those hadiths as well. So from this hadith, we learn this thing. Beside this, uh, there's a ruling about the people of book, those Christians and those Jews who are living under the Islamic government. So this hadith also tell us that we cannot enter their house without their permission if they are living under the Islamic government. So it is a duty of Islamic government to give them protection. Second thing, before Islam, people used to humiliate their enemies. So that thing is also forbidden here that we cannot do any harm to their families, their women, their children. We cannot do anything to them. We cannot harass them. So this is not allowed in Islam. The Islamic government must give them protection. Similarly, whatever they grow in their fields, we cannot take them dead with force. So it is the duty of Islamic government to give them those protections. Next to these also, we will read it today, inshallah. So I recommend all of you to pause the video and then read this hadith. So again, what will happen if we neglect the hadith? If we neglect the hadith, then for our daily matters of the things which we came across in our life, if we neglect the hadith, then people will use their mind to answer those questions. The scholar will answer these questions according to their mind. But this hadith tells you that be aware of new things in our, our affairs, in our daily life. So this means we cannot answer anything any religious thing from our mind. We cannot add new thing in our religion. Why? Because every new thing is a Bidda. Bidda means a new thing, innovation in Islam. And every Bidda is an error. So basically, this and this tells you that you cannot add or remove anything from Islam. For everything, you need to follow Quran and Hadith only 
So even if our big scholar says something without the reference from Quran and Hadith, we can just reject it. It is our right to ask them the reference from Quran and Hadith. Then you can read this Hadith in detail. There is one more thing here that we need to listen to the our commander, our Amir, our ruler. So whatever we he say in the light of Quran and Hadith, even if we disagree with him in some matter, we need to listen to him in everything. We need to obey him. Otherwise, this will cause fitna, this will cause trouble in the society. So it is a natural thing. All people never agree on the same thing. So whenever there is a disagreement with the ruler, we need to listen to them. And there is a separate hadith about those rulers who are unjust. So we will study that in detail in China as well, how to deal with uh, rulers who are unjust, who are oppressors. Then the last hadith that we are going to see today is this one, hadith number 166 of Mishkat al Masabi. I forgot to tell you a few things about this one that <clears throat> this hadith that you see here is a mention in the book Sunan Abi Daud as well. And this hadith is mentioned in Masnad Imam Ahmad and Sunan Abi Daud and Sunan Tirmizi and Sunan Ibn Majah. In all those books, in all those hadith books, this hadith is mentioned as well. Now we have this hadith, the last one which we are going to study today. So here Prophet ﷺ draw a parable. So in which he drew a straight line, then he draw many lines to right and left of that line. Then he told that this is my path, the straight one. So follow it. So the straight path basically mean here Quran and Hadith, Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and whatever Allah has revealed in the Holy Quran. So if we follow it, then we will successful. If we don't follow Quran and Hadith, then we need to remember this sentence. These are the paths on each of which is a devil who invites people to it. So if you leave Quran and Hadith and start your mind to uh, handle to deal daily life problems then you need to remember this this thing that in every path there is a devil who is basically inviting you you use using your mind using your brand using your desires to to him so if you follow those paths which are other than quran and hadith then you will be doomed so you must follow quran and hadith if you want to be successful in this life and in the next life as well so that's all for today if you have any question feel free to ask me in the comments or on my whatsapp number so see you all next time inshallah